one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you all for coming. We are uh, opening the meeting, and uh, I would ask if there is anyone here for public comment. Seeing and hearing none, I am going to move in the agenda to new business, and we will come back, obviously, to take um, our meeting minutes and other reports. But uh, we do have uh, a dog nuisance complaint, and we do have the uh, dog uh, officer uh, here. And we also, I think, have the complainant, Mr. Jalbert, here. I don't know if anyone's here representing the um, owner or the owner of the, of the dog. Okay. Um, if we could um, open the hearing, please. Um, we're opening the hearing and um, be interested in your situation. And Mr. Jalbert, I'm probably similar to the last time we were here. And if the dog officer would like to give us an update of where we are. Um, hi, my name is Jennifer Ford. I'm the Animal Control Officer for Butler Regional. I cover the town of Barry. Um, we were here last April, I believe, April of 2022, regarding the dog that was at 160 Valley Road. Uh, at the time, it was a nuisance complaint regarding barking. Um, it was found that the dog is a significant barker. Um, Mr. Jalbert was kind enough to purchase and provide a no bark collar for the dog. Um, I had it shipped to me. I went over, showed her how to use it, make sure everybody was clear on the charging and all of those kind of things. I think we had a small reprieve when she was, yeah, was a couple months using, of using the collar. Um, we started to get complaints again uh, shortly thereafter. And um, so, so it hasn't been like a, like seven or eight months of no barking. No, we, we made it. Okay. It's, Probably two months. Probably two months, yeah. Did you, was that, did, did, was the dog conti continue to wear the collar and it just didn't work anymore, well, or? Actually, this we made it probably a little bit more than that. I think I have, oh, no, we didn't. I We made it till August, mm -hmm. it looks like. Um, the dog was sort of continuing to wear the collar um, half the time. I went over and spoke to Maggie, who told me that that's the, that's the oh, owner? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Maggie, the owner of the dogs, um, spoke to her and she told me that her, she was concerned about the collar because it seemed to be changing the dog's personality. Um, her parents, I believe, convinced her of that. Um, but I can see it to some, I mean, to some degree. I mean, I, I have dogs that have used bark collars and this dog would get very excited when they would go out to it, which in turn would make it bark, which in turn would make it shock, which in turn makes it kind of cringe down when you're going. And it's just something that you have to learn to adjust to as far as, the dog will eventually stop that behavior and you get the collars off quick and you learn how to do some of those things faster. Um, so that was how the call started again and I explained all this to her and asked her to put the collar back on which I don't think she was very receptive to. Um, we've continued to get barking complaints until this day. They have expanded into other things though. There was one point in time that she was just letting the dog run loose because if the dog was running loose it wasn't barking as much because it wasn't confined in the front of the house on a chain. Um, I received complaints from neighbors about that. Um, the dog going to various yards, and ironically received a complaint from her parents about it. Um, it was they share a yard; it's a duplex. So they said the dog is loose in their yard, but that's also Maggie's yard. So that's not much we can do about that. But is the dog um, registered? Is he is he's he licensed? Not licensed no. He's not licensed. That no. was ordered last time, was it not? That she licensed the dog. She got its rabies vaccine, but has not licensed it. But didn't at this last meeting? I believe we ordered her to license it and to get the bark collar. Yes, so licensing never happened. Um, she is her, and this is just speculation. Um, her parents have been through a lot of things, and one of those was that if she licensed the dog, that I would have control over the dog's medical decisions, um, which is not obviously the case. And I wish I, that would be the case. I would let, license mine twice. No, I <laughs> know. I really want to do my own. I know. Um, I think. I think some of the issues, some of the calls from the parents is I think that they would like us to take care of the problem for them that goes next door to being the dog. Which, you know, okay. Um, other complaints that I've received more recently, as much as this past weekend, is the dog being tied outside in this weather. So mm. Saturday was extremely cold. We received a dog being, um, about the dog being tied outside. We said at least for over a half an hour. Um, I was off duty. I did get the text, but they also sent an officer because I wasn't in the area. The call came in at 1.07 that said the dog had been out for at least a half an hour. The officer went at 1.20, um, so 13 minutes later, and the dog was inside at that time. Um, the complainant I spoke to today 
said that her husband drove by, husband and boyfriend drove by first thing in the morning to go to work and the dog was out and then again at noon and the dog was out and they were under the impression the dog was out that whole time but I can't prove that one way or the other. She can say that the dog is tied up for hours on end. Um, we do have laws pertaining to um, critical weather, mm -hmm. you know, advisories, things like that. Right. Um, when there is a weather advisory, whether it be heat, extreme cold, snow, things like certain rain, thunderstorms, a dog can be tied, tethered out for no more than 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, there is another law stating that a dog over the course of 24 hours can only be tethered for five of those hours. And it can go out to go to the bathroom at other times, obviously, um, for no longer than a 15 minute period and the owner has to stay with them. Um, there's no time overnight from like 10 p.m. to 6 p.m. the dog can be up to uh, 6 a.m. the dog can be up tethered. I don't believe she's leaving the dog overnight. I do believe that the dog is tethered for a good part of its life. Um, I, I know the barking is a is a huge issue. At this point, I'm also concerned about the way this dog is living his life. He's just not living his best life. He's tied on a chain or a run, two pallets in the front yard, which is usually kind of a mess and probably not the safest environment. His water is, may or may not be there. Obviously, in this kind of weather, it's frozen regardless. If this dog is, uh, and again, the hard part for me is I'm not always right in this area. So if somebody calls and says the dog is tied out or the dog is running loose, I can't always be here immediately to confirm. But Mr. Jalbert can probably speak better on that because he is right there. Um, but we've had, like I said, the top of the barking now, we've had some additional complaints as far as the dog being loose and as far as the way the dog is, the condition of the dog is being kept. And I don't at this point see any other resolution to these problems because I just don't see them going away with more guidelines for her. And I think at this point my only recommendation would be for them to rehome the dog. And it's, it's, you know, and I hate to make people do that, but I just feel that's probably in the best interest of the dog. Oh, how, what is the success of such efforts? Of, of rehoming a dog like that? dog. Um, it's supposed to fall on the dog owner because towns typically don't take responsibility. I have no problem taking responsibility if they will surrender the dog to me. I cannot make them give me the dog. Um, from, I imagine, from the decision and from they would, when they would receive some type of letter, I would imagine they would have 10 days to either appeal that decision to a clerk magistrate or comply with said decision. If they don't comply and don't appeal, I don't know how, I have to look into how we go physically remove the dog from the property. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the authority to just mm -hmm. do that because I don't have any, they give me no power. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have the, so I have to find out how we could go about doing that. I'm not opposed to having the dog surrendered to me. Um, I have heard that the dog is nippy and I know that at one point in time, the dog got hit by a car and I had convinced Maggie to surrender to the dog to the MSPCA so we could get it the appropriate medical treatment and all of those things. When she was on the phone with the MSPCA doing an intake, like, you know, report mm -hmm. or an intake summary, um, evaluation, I guess, she told the MSPCA person that the dog was very nippy. He was like, why did this person and this person and the kid and stuff. So the MSPCA informed her that the dog would most likely be put down if they surrendered it to them. So that made her renege. And I said, okay, well, would you still surrender it to me and I'll look at other options. And, but at that point, it was you know a no go. Um, I can't promise the fate of the dog. I can say that I would take the dog to my kennel and try to get it evaluated and do anything I could to get it into some kind of rescue that would deal with it. He is a very high drive dog who is two years old. He's he's a high drive breed. He's you know a couple. He's got what cattle dog and an Aussie. And I mean, he's he's a very busy breed. He's gonna want to herd things. So he's mm -hmm. gonna want to be biting ankles and moving the kids along. Mm -hmm. um, he's I'm sure frustrated out of his mind because I think he goes from that run to a crate. And if he is loose in the house, it's not a very big area and not for a very long time. He needs some kind of job. I mean, I would be hopeful that maybe between all my towns, I could find somebody with some land or somebody that, you know, I compete with my dogs in several events. I'd throw it out there to see if somebody wants a dog that they want to do barn hunt with as a competition or work or do some type of something with. Can I promise that this dog is placeable? No. I don't, I don't know the dog enough to spend enough time to know what she is referring to when she's mm -hmm. saying it's nippy and bitey. That could be just because of the dog's frustration or it could be because this dog just does have a little nasty streak because he's been mm -hmm. poorly socialized and I don't know which one that is. Mr. Jalbert, do you have some things to add? 
Anybody on the board have questions or comments? Sure. Part 1, Chapter 140, Section 157, which is the nuisance and dangerous dog mm -hmm. section that we deemed the dog um, a nuisance dog. Last there, year. there were um, terms in there um, to uh, appeal the order, which was not, not done. And then we revert down to Section H, which says if the owner or keeper of a dog found in violation of an order, which is what we issued under this section, the dog shall be subject to seizure and impoverment by law enforcement or animal control officers. We reached that without this this meeting, mm -hmm. but we had this meeting as a courtesy to allow her to come in and to hear from the dog officer. Uh, if the keeper is in violation, all reasonable efforts shall be made by the seizing authority to notify the owner of the dog of such seizure. Upon receipt of such notice, the owner may file a petition with the hearing authority, which would be us, us within seven days for return of the dog. The owner or keeper shall be ordered to immediately surrender the license <clears throat> to the licensing authority, the license and tags in the person's possession, if any. And the owner or keeper shall be prohibited from licensing a dog within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for five years. Hearing authority that determines the dog is dangerous or a nuisance, the dog owner <clears throat> and the dog owner has violated an order issued under this section shall report such violations to the issuing licensing authority within 30 days. So we do have the right to mm -hmm. order the dog officer to seize the dog. Um, I think it has to come from you. Look, I, don't, I don't think I could have gone right. on my own violation. Right, so right. but we, we, we do have the authority to have you notify her and seize the dog. And then we have to, within 30 days, notify um, the state that the dog has been seized for violation of this order. Um, and how long do we hold the dog? Seven days she has to appeal to us. And then and if for some reason she could convince us to overturn. But her right to appeals, and it says otherwise the order is the subject to sections D and F, which would have happened at the initial order, which she so didn't she not act on. No, it's already gone. Um, did, she maybe, never she challenged our order, and then she was refused she formally to by, so. advised of this hearing? Yep. Okay, yeah, so she, she received the same letter that the um, animal control officer did, the police department did, and Mr. Jobler also received okay. the same letter. Okay, we did, got nothing back from her indicating she couldn't come? No, and I didn't hear from her the last time we had a but letter she did, either. But she did, she did appear. Um, so, um, uh, John, questions or comments? Um, this is obviously a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I appreciate you guys bringing this to the board. You know, um, it, it's challenging as a kid. You know, we had a similar situation, and my dog was shot. Oh. oh. So it's, you know. I won't do that. I'm not well, no, I'm not suggesting anyone would at this point. I mean, that was many years ago, but it's, it's you know, I don't like to tell people what to do, and but at the same time, you know, it's it's a, if it's becoming a safety issue, especially escaping, getting loose, you know, we don't want to see more harm come from taking no action. I think at this point, like, I mean, like, I mean yes, I, I don't take this wrong. I'm, I'm concerned about Joe's peace. I'm also just concerned about the condition the dog is living in. I mean, it was freezing on Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly on the board, we, I've, I've come across multiple dog issues over the years, and I'm, I'm always in support of animals. Uh, it's the people I want to punish, not the dogs. Um, in this case, we, we tried a simple sanction, and she's absolutely not willing and not willing to give this dog a chance. It is tied out. Every time I've driven by, it's tied out, like you said, between these pallets and the front lawn. It has no shelter. It doesn't even have a dog house. It's it just... Now. Well, did last month yeah. there, but it's not a great. I mean, it's not a great setup regardless. It, it's just not good, and I've seen uh, video from Mr. Jobber of the dog walking in his driveway. So clearly, he's got evidence that it's out and about walking around. It's crossing Valley Road, which is you know. Yeah, that's not a good road. It's not good for the dog. It's not good. You know, if it is nippy, it's not good for people, especially if it's playful. Um, you know, I had a Jack Russell. You run, it would chase you and nip you. Right. So he didn't go anywhere. Um, but you know, the kids in the house knew you run from. He's going to nip you, and that's what he does. And if this dog is of that nature. You know, he's likely to bite someone, not trying to necessarily do harm, but it still hurts. He'll give you pinches, they might break the skin, and it's not safe for the dog. And I, so, I think we should order it to be removed. So if we order this uh, to be removed, if we uh, follow your recommendation, can you describe for me specifically what you will do once the order is issued from Mars? I would get in touch with the police department, because okay. that's who I would obviously attend with and then go in technically with them and they would serve for the order and physically take her dog, which will not be a fun day. No, it will not. Um, I would hope that we could take the dog without 
you know, the use of a radius pole or a snare pole or any of those things that may require some of her assistance, but I would try to do it the nicest way possible. Mm -hmm. They'll then go to my kennel for the town's, our, our kennel um, in Rutland. We have a small, very small kennel head uh, behind DPW. Um, nice, heated, mm -hmm. indoor outdoor runs. Well, they won't want to leave. Mm -hmm. They won't want to leave. Right. So, so it'll stay there. So we will serve her the order before you arrive on the property. Is that correct? Well, the, the no. police, the police department she, would have to yeah. tell me. I don't know that. Okay. We generate the order. According yeah. to this, we could send the police or her. Yeah. Um, but well, I'm, I think you're, you're, you're requesting that the police accompany you. Oh, I would, yeah. I would, I would okay. Have accompany me for this. Okay. Yeah, this will, this, is, this will not go smoothly. I could probably agree with you on so that. So that I will go to the count for the seven-day holds. Um, if she appeals it from you, it stays for any appeal process whatsoever. Okay. I mean, you think that appealing to you is the end for her? I, I, I mean, the end process. It, it sure reads process. it here. The only other appeal okay. she had was, was previous for the okay. 10 days. Um, it stays, you have to house the dog for any yeah. length of time. Well, well obviously, we, we would... We would we can confer with council and make yeah, sure we're, we're doing it. Yeah, and not only properly. that, but we would obviously like days. to have a smooth process. There's a child in the home, a young child. Um, it would be nice if we could do this some when the child wasn't at home, but that may or not. She could cooperate with us and make this very I easy. Mean, if, she, if she was willing to cooperate, I, you know, I'll do anything yeah. that's necessary. Yeah. And Mr. Dalbert, you have been magnanimous in your efforts to provide the park collar and so forth, and we do very much appreciate that. Uh, it's sad that, you know, not only has the barking collar not been used with consistency, but, I mean, there wasn't even an attempt to get a license for the animal. Um, I think she's under some very misguided information that she takes from her, her parents on the other side because they're her version of an authority figure, and they tell her, you know, don't get the dog licensed and don't do this, and, and it backfires on her. And, I mean, she's an adult and can make the decision on her own, but I think that's just... We were certainly clear about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no, I, I, I concur with that. I just know that this is going to be a troubling time for that family. And um, I think, you know, the, the elders will be giving advice that may not be really helpful, and the child will yeah. be there, and I'm sure if that, because I don't think he's school age, I don't no, believe. He's three. Here oh, so he's just a little guy. And the type of dog, again, for the record? Australian Shepherd Cattle Dog Mix. Australian Shepherd Cattle Dog Mix about two or three, or two years old, so bearing in mind if anybody listening is considering adopting a dog, we may have one that would be looking for a home. Well, I'd rather... It would be nice to find the dog a home. I hate to see the dog destroyed or harmed, and if anybody... aware, though, I don't like to sugarcoat things, that I will try to find this dog a home. I'll give it my best effort. We'll give it a reasonable amount of time, but we won't hold the dog. I mean... The town pay, you know, obviously, I mean, we can't hold the dog indefinitely, right. and I can't I guarantee, because I don't know the dog's temperament, that it won't be utilized. Yeah. And I'd just like to make that clear, because... Yeah. I think that there are a lot of people, like, well, a lot like, of people that do own dogs that yeah. understand, I agree, but that understand it, dogs. But uh, when you that do made, try to find those owners, right. it's funny how, it's funny how when there's really not a dog up, everybody would take that dog, but when there's, like, physically a dog, it, sometimes they're very hard to get. Yeah. I understand. I, I just bring it up again if people are listening and know someone. Um, There's no return policy on taking one of those dogs, correct? No, it's, it's no. Just one Final time. sale. Yes. Final yes. sale? Yes. Okay. Now, um, and we have to think of the, oh, sorry. Oh, we have no, to think no. of the liability, too, when you're placing a dog out like that. Um, we don't really have an adoption policy. Uh -huh. So what my goal would be, to try to, would be to try to funnel this dog through a different rescue. Okay. Because there is a liability for the towns when you're placing a dog out that could potentially be and then bite somebody else, especially without a certain adoption policy. And we are not a shelter, so that's not mm -hmm. how we operate. Well, to our, to our knowledge, or we, we have, the dog has no not bitten anyone. No knowledge correct. Correct. Okay. We have no bite record of okay. the dog, which is... And, you know, nippy may or may not right. be real. But I'm just saying there is a liability, which is why I try, if I can, we don't have an adoption policy in town, so we don't have that policy okay. in any of my towns that we are a shelter, that people can turn in their dogs to us just because they don't want it anymore and that we have an adoption program to adopt them out. We don't have evaluators. We don't have all of those people. Um, so I try to funnel most of my dogs like, you know, through a rescue, a different rescue, you know, like a second chance, or this one down in the western part of the state, or a purebred rescue. There could be an Aussie rescue that would take him or a cattle dog rescue that would take him, considering he's part of that. 
So that's the route we prefer to go mm -hmm. if we can, because then he's going to get the appropriate evaluations and things. Let's hope okay. that seven days of, of fair treatment and good living calms a dog down. You may find out it's a very yeah, nice oh, dog. And a lot of dogs, when they are rescued from a harsher environment, they go to a nicer home. Uh, their demeanor is drastically different. Oh, correct. Um, and they they want to be in some very, very, very it's nice very dogs. It's very hard sometimes to tell in a kennel situation. And even when a dog is adopted out, they say you don't see the, the real dog for approximately three months. It takes them three days to decompress, three weeks to feel like they may be living there, and three months to be comfortable enough to show who they really are. Mm -hmm. So, And again, I'm not saying that we're not going to do everything we can for this yeah. dog. I just like to be realistic about it. Um, now, you said it was um, a split family home? It's a duplex. A duplex. Side by oh. side. Um, is the owner of the dog the owner of the property? No, the parents. Oh, on the other the side. parents are, and they have also called you about issues with the dog. Correct. correct. Okay. So the property one, owners have even called. One was addressed here at the last hearing because yeah. we suggested moving the dog to the backyard, but her mother didn't want to hear the dog back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that would have solved some of the issues from the dog seeing the street and the traffic and things like that. Okay. Yeah, they I don't think it's a bad dog. They acknowledge your barking was a problem, but mother didn't want to hear it, so the rest of the world had. Yeah. Well, um, we have your recommendation, and um, obviously the board uh, can begin to deliberate and for to take action. I'd make a motion that we um, order this dog removed. I would uh, ask for a friendly amendment that we um, we make that ju judgment, but only after our efforts to have our counsel, legal counsel make certain that we are following every particular step properly because I would expect this is going to be a very controversial uh, seizure. I shall amend my motion. I make a motion that we have the dog removed, providing it is cleared through legal counsel. Thank you so much. A second. We have a motion made and seconded. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like a vote. Uh, so, I will, Jessica, I, uh, once you cleaned up things with the counsel, you can work with the... Uh, dog uh, officer and hopefully and the police yeah and the police and ho however the seizure is safest for you please feel free to ma execute it that way yeah, thank you. The, the officers in town are very accommodating when it comes to going on certain calls with me and yeah. no problem going I just would like and to I mean, try to do it so it doesn't escalate into something yeah. more for them yeah. and I think we all do this with heavy heart uh, oh, yeah. it's unfortunate it's but it, yeah you know Especially being a breed, two breeds that I think are terrific. Yeah, but, so am I. But they, but they, but they are just busy. <laughs> but they're busy. <laughs> they're very busy. They need a job to do. They're very busy, and they do bite ankles. Well, I have two Belgian Malinois, so I know about the job part. But yeah. Without it, they're not. They're not fun dogs to live with without having something to do. No. Right. Well. So. Anyway. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Okay, moving moving well, I along. Have dogs in the morning. I don't have enough time to spend enough time with them. Yeah. I have more to a dog than I can give. Certified or anything, right? But the order would be served that way. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, if not just in person. Yeah, in person. Well, in person, but by an authority. Delivered by the author. Oh, oh, right, we, if right. We had by, the, by the officers. The they have the officers delivered. No, I'm yes. not the one delivering. <laughs> just just no. not. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have the officers delivered right, when they come. <laughs> okay, I know that there have been discussions um, regarding the Ware River watershed and uh, what use people will have of those areas. And I, I guess you guys have been there as our representatives. I know uh, Greg has also been there as a member of the Board of Selectmen. So uh, any discussion you have to bring to the Board's attention? Feel sure. free to join us yeah. if you like. The speakers are closer so people can hear us at home. Right. So um, I'm here for the Barry Historical Commission. I am not a member of the Ware River Watershed Advisory Committee. And Mike Wood is your representative mm -hmm. of the Ware River Watershed Committee. And Chuck Coppolino is also a member of the Barry Historical Commission. So um, I just want you all to know, and I appreciate your comments at the public input meeting. This has been going on for 98 years, <laughs> OK? So this is nothing new. But what I want us to understand is that in the past, you know, standing up for what we can for our town has work to some degree, not maybe what we would want. But back in 1925, they were going to put a huge dam across Barry Falls and create a reservoir there. And it was going to stop most of the flow of the water coming down the Ware River, which would have killed all industry in, you know, Colebrook, White Valley, uh, Barry Plains, South Barry, Wheelwright, 
all the way down through where to Chicopee. So there was a huge um, backlash of people along the Ware River and even below people in Connecticut because it eventually goes down into the Connecticut River um, backlash and they changed the plan to create a diversion for the Ware River so that water would be mm -hmm. sent over to uh, Quabbin then through the aqueduct. No reservoir. This is probably better for us. I don't think we could imagine what it would have been like if there had been very little flow in the Ware River. But um, as you probably know, land was taken through the 1920s and 30s to create the watershed. And it's about 22% of our total land property. And I know those of us that grew up here in Barrie, we, we could drive. There were no gates on those <laughs> roads. You could just drive through there. And gradually, they have added some gates. They've added some restrictions. But for the most part, we've had that as one of our prime recreational and outdoor in historical sites because that land is really the cradle of our history of Barrie. It's where our first settlers were, the Cogwells and all that. Um, our black history is centered in there and it's a, a history that's important to the state because the slave who fought for his freedom that made all slaves in Massachusetts free lived right there in the watershed. So I think it's very important that we stand up to our ability to have access to these areas. So when they took, the state took the properties, and I've got pictures of 100 homes that they took, they also took the villages of Cold Brook and White Valley. Now we talk about compensation for the landowners, which they got for their land, but there are also indirect and consequential damages. One of those is that the mills in White Valley were the third largest taxpayer to the town of Barrie. So the town of Barrie lost tax income from its third largest producer. I do not believe we were compensated for that, or any of the other businesses in Barrie that relied on the people that used to live there that used to come in and do business. So there were a lot of secondary things that were never compensated for. We did get some compensation in a way by having now this lovely area to use as our recreation and they've been chipping away at that without giving a really good answer as to why it's necessary from an environmental point of view. I know you asked very directly, what's the water report that says? I asked directly after the meeting, I talked to them privately, yeah. and it was a very disheartening answer. Um, and I actually retorted to them, you sound like a four-year-old at your yeah. argument. Yeah. Their argument was simply, well, no one else has to let people drive in their watershed areas. Right. So the state is trying to say that they have to treat, in order to keep this an unfiltered water system, they want Ware River Watershed, Quabbin Watershed, and Wachusett Watershed to all be treated the same. And as they say in all of their documents, of course they're not the same because Ware River Watershed does not have a reservoir, and the other two do. So if we were just what, driving across Ware River, oh, Wachusett yeah. Reservoir, how many times do you drive over the Wachusett Reservoir, there's railroad tracks there. This city, well, it's a town of Clinton, I guess, but it's a fairly built up area right there. The road's all around it. Yeah, and, and yet, and we also have 122 crossing right over at the Culver, you know, Ocam area. So I think what they're doing is they have this pressure from the state and they're just really shooting darts at a target, say, if we come up with some combination of lessening the use of the watershed, maybe the higher ups will be happy. And we'll just, you know, kind of see what we can come up with. But it's not based on reason. And I think that for most of us, the issue is these areas are public land and they're supposed to be open to the public. We've got wildlife management areas within the watershed. And their proposal is that only certain hunters that get special permits will be allowed to drive in with their vehicles and hunt those areas. And, you know, that just really is not fair to the public, which is supposed to have access to wildlife <coughs> management areas for bird watching. I don't know if you know that Mass Audubon has designated this as an important birding area. And people come from all over the region to do birding in the wild, the Ware River watershed. And once again, this is bringing income into Barrie through the, you know, through tourists and people coming here to enjoy the watershed. So once again, we're getting an indirect hit um, economically that there's no way that you're going to find a law that says 
that we have to be compensated for the loss of tourism or whatever that their actions take. So for 98 years, there's been these inconsequent, these um, indirect consequences that have not really been addressed in compensation. And I know that the payment in lieu of taxes has not changed for something like 20 years. And they're basing it on the fact that it's Barry has not grown like Princeton has, for example. Well, it hasn't grown because they took, they took a quarter of our land area. So it's, um, you know, they're taking away our recreational area. And if you look at the DCR verbiage, they'll say, our job is to connect people with the environment to give them good mental and physical health by enjoying the out of doors. And the same with mass wildlife. Our job is to keep these areas open to the public for their enjoyment, for mental and physical health. And you probably heard all the people testifying in November at the meeting that going to the watershed, swimming in Comet Pond or doing whatever is very good for my mental and physical health. And a lot of those people were doctors, so we've got to believe them. They want to ban long distance swimming in Long Pond. Yeah. And the, the, the insanity, some of the insanities in this, uh, first of all, there, there's nothing they even attempted to demonstrate to show any evidence that this would um, benefit water quality in any way, shape, or form. The duration where they're allowed to draw water f into the Quabbin is a, it's after the fall and, and before the spring. It's, it's when the water appears and there's no impurities and no bacteria and no algae and things in the water. So at the time when people would utilize this water, and most of the time the people I utilize the woods, they can't draw water anyways. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, so it really doesn't impact any time when they can draw the water. And their only excuse is that other places don't have to do it. But I tried to point out to them that these other places are established with no restriction when they made the dams in yeah. places. And this has already been existing. So it's not a matter of keeping it like it is. We're not saying someplace else should have to open up their gates and let yeah. people walk up to the water reservoirs. Mm -hmm. um, but they're trying to take away access that people have. Right. And they, their claim is we're not removing access because anyone's allowed to go in there. Yeah. Right. You just can't drive. Yeah. But the reality is, as we all know, this is many miles. Yeah. Then you're not going to walk through you many miles. You can't drive anything? Like anything. They want a limit to a bicycle? Uh, no, that's, that's another. Mountain issue. biking's a big no-no. Mountain biking is. is They're going to make some new trails for that, they say, right. but yeah. generally. And horseback riding, but vehicle travel, traffic is going to be limited by their proposal. It'll be limited from the end of mud season to October 1st to just two roads. Uh, Colebrook Road, the length of it from the dam to 122, and then Intervale Road from the uh, Rutland Public Roads into the prison camp area. Yeah. But no, uh, according to them, no, no driving through the driving water. Driving north of the prison camp along the river or south of the prison camp to the state park mm -hmm. or connecting that area to Colebrook. We also have, um, at least so far, what they've put in writing. It's only roads on the east side of the Ware River, nothing on the west side, which would be like Granger Road, Gilbert Road. Um, so it's, at, from a historian's point of view, um, we've driven through the watershed and watched logging operations where they have just destroyed the stone walls, and who knows what else. Now, if you're a geocacher in there, the rules say you can't even move a stone if you're, you know, you took a look at your geocaching thing, you have to put the stone right back where it was. And yet, stone walls are, are removed, um, piled up, and they have, they're doing logging over streams, and they're complaining that my little ford is going to create turbidity in the tributary streams to the Ware River, and yet you watch this huge logging operation, which of course they get the benefit of. Mm -hmm. Even if it's on Barry's land, you know, and within Barry, we don't get any direct benefit. Right. So once again, it's the direct versus indirect. So, you know, for 98 years, we've had this indirect benefit of having this area without any direct benefit, which is the water supply. We don't get a water there. And, you know, if, if <coughs> they had very specific things that they could say, this area has been damaged or whatever, come up with a plan for that. But don't just make this blanket lack of access proposal. I think, I think what I would have to ask is, what would be helpful for this board to do in order to 
um, provide you, I mean, because let's face it, three of us aren't going to probably change the state's no. world, but I don't know what other, you know, whether it be Hubbardston or us and OCAM and so forth, you know, where maybe a, a, a joint effort on the select board's part might be, I'm not saying it is, it might be helpful. Well, it was helpful. Now, in 2020, when I first got involved, February 18th, I came and met with this body, although there are two of you are different on it, and Jeff Stillings, representing the Rutland Select Board, came. He has left the area, so he's not involved now. Um, and the Select Board signed a letter that the other Select Boards also signed. We do not have the coordination now between the Select Boards. We do have a letter, if you would like to sign mm -hmm. for support. Senator Groby has been very, very helpful in all of this. At this point right now, she says basically hope for new blood coming in um, from leadership to uh, change. Oh, what's you mean going the, 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 the uh, governor? Healy, Healy Crown. At the time, I, I talked with uh, Senator Gobi um, that evening, and she said at, at that point it was up in the air. She had no idea who was going to be appointed. You know, we don't know if that will be a you know, a political appointment, mm -hmm. you know, someone that's done something for the party or if it's going to be a, you know, a thoughtful, you know, appointment. She didn't feel that she had, of course, any ear with the governor at that point mm -hmm. um, to bring him forward. So there wasn't, you know. I contacted her last week and it's about the same situation now. Yeah. So uh, there's obviously a lot so of So you're saying that, governor, that, so. If, that if we, okay, as, as a board, uh, contacted other boards and said, we're signing this, this is really important. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know if there's somebody from OCAM who represents OCAM on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you have so you have names that you can... Absolutely. I am sure all yeah. the boards would sign this I am very, too. very quickly, as I, as I did before. They're all very well aware of what's going on um, and very much against it. Um, and would this help if this would be something that the general public would have access to and sign? And well, we actually have um, petitions and letters similar to this one that individuals and groups, there's been a lot of support from groups and individuals mm -hmm. signing petitions, which we'll get all copies of for Senator Gobi so she knows that yeah. she has the support behind her. Um, and Mike has been working with a we have a watershed advisory committee which I'm not on so right. he has access to DCI that he can um, you know use this type of this is uh, a lot of the uh, Lucy put together as a suggested uh, model because you might your board might consider signing now the public period ends February 28th yeah, so this is our push now. So there's a portal on their website. Mm -hmm. There's the 2022 public access plan. There's a public input portal. Oh, okay. But we're concerned that, you know, you type in your comments and Nothing. they disappear and there's no record. You don't get a record of it. You don't oh. get it so back. We, you can't can we ask record. the clerk read this into record for the, for the public? Absolutely. Please. To the Department of <coughs> Conservation and Recreation, Office of Public Outreach, 251 Causeway Street, Boston, Mass, 02114. Subject? Ware River Watershed Public Access Management Plan Update. The Select Board of the Town of Barrie, Massachusetts requests that the Department of Conservation and Recreation, DCR, stop its current proposal to ban vehicles from the internal roads of the Ware River Watershed, except for allowing certain permitted hunters to have vehicles, vehicle access during deer hunting season. We have always had vehicle access to the internal roads of the Ware River Watershed which comprises almost one quarter of Barry's land and much of the area of the town of Rutland, Hubbardston, and Ocamp. For those who are elderly or disabled, it will be impossible to access the Ware River watershed for legitimate wildlife observation, recreational, and historical purposes if vehicles are not allowed on the roads. The Ware River watershed has been a very important resource for our residents since the watershed was created in the 1920s. Not having this resource will have a negative impact on the mental and physical health of the people of Barrie. DCR has been asked to produce water quality studies showing that legitimate vehicle use in the Ware River watershed has caused water quality problems and it has not done so. We strongly oppose the current DCR proposal to limit access to the internal roads of the Ware River watershed. We request that DCR keep the internal roads of the Ware River watershed open to all members of the public for legitimate vehicle use. 
I would I would accept a motion to to um, authorize the board to uh, sign this uh, on its behalf. I make that motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded regarding the use of this letter by the board of selectmen in the town of Barry, and uh, we'll share the wealth with other communities to hope that they will also move in this direction. And thank you so much for taking the time to come and give us an update. We Should yeah. we vote on that officially? Yeah, well, just uh, any other comments or questions before we vote? We'd like to, if we could have a copy of the signed letter when you get it signed sure. and a follow uh, up on uh, whoever you were able to contact from the other towns. Any sure. any further comments, questions? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like an unanimous vote. And we can sign that uh, tonight and yep. give it to you to take. Oh, okay. Thank you. Go ahead and get it started. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you taking the now, time to. We also have petition here if anybody you know, wants to sign anybody? it. Now, historically, didn't we have um, grave sites there that had potential national history? Yes. Where Where is that? Has any effort been made to get that on a national registry? Well, you're move asking forward with a that? very good question. That <laughs> because that's have. that would seem monumentally important to make yes. sure that everyone has access to those national mm -hmm. monuments that are there. The Barry Historical Commission met a week ago Friday, and that was one topic of conversation. The Prince Walker Burial Ground is off of Gilbert Road on that west of the Ware River part. Um, Gilbert Road goes along the Burnshire River from 62 over to Williamsville Road. And it's owned up on a steep hillside, and it's owned by the town of Barrie. Now, the burial ground is maybe three times the size of this table. It's surrounded by DCR land. Um, to get something on the National Register, you have to go through the state. The state has to review it and approve it. You has to get owners, the owner's approval. And then it can move on to the national level. And I have talked with the state about this. They would want us to have a consultant to dot all the I's and cross the T's. But it is very good that the town actually owns the burial ground. So if the town wants it on the National Register, that's, that's one big step forward because DCR might complain, but they don't own it. They only they control all the access. We can't put out signs. We can't make trails. But I think it would be very good for the town because we get calls about, why don't you make this known? Why don't you do more about it? We also have the whole Gilbert Road, Granger Road going out by the James Caldwell House and all out there, the James Caldwell Monument in the woods where Quack Walker worked, who was the slave that made the bit of freedom. We have a very unusual history for a small New England town, um, but, but it's being controlled by the state for the most part. So we would love to consider doing that. It's something that's on our list for getting going this year. We're just making a copy of the letter we signed oh, so we okay. records, and that will be great down for you. But again, a couple thing. maps here oh, okay. of what DCR would like to limit the two uh, vehicle access to. And I've sent uh, emails to Jessica and Greg and asked them to forward them to you mm -hmm. about the, my last meeting with mm -hmm. DCR about expanding that mm -hmm. uh, road. So this is what DCR proposes. This is the watershed. Mm -hmm. This is Colebrook Road. This would be Barry Falls, no. the actual dam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Barry Falls down to 120. Okay. I mean, uh, Colebrook Road down to 122. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And then this short stretch of Intervale Road from from Rutland into the prison camp. Mm -hmm. So that's so what, limited access. So what, what, what is your, what is the what is the access going to be? By <laughs> via, from from the end of mud season till October 1st, you would be limited to going in by vehicle to that road. That little stretch of road, okay, and Colebrook Road to 122. Okay. We met with them the other night, and we asked that they expand it to these roads, mm -hmm. um, and made arguments for each individual road. We asked that uh, Lucy be included from the historical commission. They wanted to limit it to the sportsman's perspective, and then they ask for her contact information. We're going to speak to her about historical uh, sites to, I mean, uh, access to historical sites. But we did uh, give her information to that. I wonder if there is a sanction we could get while we're pending this um, historical designation from a court, be it state or federal, 
um, to cease any actions in there until this is settled. Get, a, get an injunction? Get some sort of injunction. I, and I wonder if in the town, if we can generate a bylaw at a town meeting, which is basically states that no one shall erect a gate in the town of Barry without first coming through the town for well, approval for said gates. Another historical thing was that they did try to close off old Worcester Road and Colebrook Cemetery, which is down. And we said no. And you said no, thank God. But it is also, and that's a town road that's open. Yeah. It is also illegal, and I don't have the citation to close off access to a cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. So, um, and they've tried to do that, and they basically are doing it to the Prince Walker burial ground, but it's a third of a mile walk up the hill. Um, so. so, the results of that meeting, they told us at the beginning of that meeting where we were asking to additional road access, that they weren't going to make any decision that night. But we have a meeting for February 9th of the advisory committee, and they put on the agenda that they're going to speak about that. Now, I don't know if they're going to tell us no, or yes, we'll take anything you ask for, or some portion of it. So now, after February 9th. Unfortunately, the discussion I had with them afterwards, they are set in what they plan to do. They saw that meeting as a mere formality to let yeah. us know what they're doing and let us gripe. Mm -hmm. um, but griping will make they, no difference. They have, they have no concern for what the people want. They're not elected positions. They are appointed, and we have no control over their jobs, and they act as such. Um, they're not worried about re-election because they're not elected. So yeah. The plan says they have to have a listening meeting, and they had it. And they, I don't think they really listened. <laughs> but, you know, there were a lot of people that spoke. I thought it was Who appoints them? They're, I guess the DCR commissioner, yeah, who's the head of DCR, who is, is now, is that a, right it's reappointed now. with the new governor. We don't know who this is yet. That's what we're uh, waiting on. They've had something like ten commissioners in the last six or seven years. This is yeah. one of their problems. Yeah. The and last the, and the new governor will Bryce. reappoint the new position. Yeah, the yeah. Senator Gobi told me so. Okay. That hadn't been done so yet, but begin. that's what put the kibosh in this forum is they were ready to move forward. Then they lost their commission. The new one's coming out, so they kind of have to play nice and wait. Yeah. But. Um, they don't seem to be listening to what the people want. And we've got to make a lot more noise with representatives yeah. and, and senators yeah. and, and get yes, this and, heard. And this, will, this is great that and people want to do that. Yes. I really think if, if we can generate for at least in this April, I mean, um, June at town meeting, a bylaw restricting the gating off of any roads or, or pathways in the town of Barrie without first obtaining a license before the town. And that said license should be up to town review at an annual town meeting which puts them off for a year. Um, it would take them at least a while to battle that in court to, to get it shot down if, if it upholds our town meeting vote. And that would certainly you know, let us say nope. And okay. then you go to well, town meeting and the okay, town so, says nope. So what's the po political thing? Why do they want this? What, 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 what? Lazy. Well, I've, spoke, <laughs> I've asked that specific question, and they say it's because of trash and dumping and and, and, yet, and yet they have no data to demonstrate that that's true. It's, it is true. There's a lot there's, of there's trash, trash in there. there. Trash. They make but no effort patrol it. They make no effort to keep people out doing they, that. I think they, would, they want to make no effort. They make these permit process things. You want to issue all these permits. They're going to have people watching ranges riding around, checking cars for permits. All of this other stuff that seems to me to be very cost and labor intensive. And I, I've suggested that maybe it would be better to partner with the town of Barry, Rutland, Oakham, Hubbardston. The people that are in there would please. And ask for additional patrols by the police and, and instead of just watershed rages who have no... They don't have any authority. They have no they arrest. They have no ability to arrest they're, anybody. They're public relations, basically, and informational people. But, I mean, if, if, if a police officer goes in there and sees somebody dumping and drinking or partying or whatever is going on in there, they have the right to arrest them and haul them out. But, but a lot of it is also unauthorized off-road vehicles. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to get in to the watershed no anyway. They, them. And, and they but just, you know... If they lock the gates, they're going to protect their access. And, that, and what it's going to do is keep those of us who go in there for legitimate reasons not oh. seeing what's doing and not reporting it. So it really is just saying we're going to we're going to reward the people that are bad and let them keep on going because we can't do anything about it and punish the ones that are good. So also, that specific point was brought up repeatedly. And it was and, specifically and discussed. And now they, they say, well, we've heard that, we've heard that, we've heard that. 
I, I pointed that out to them directly afterwards. I said, you know, if you shut the gates, the, the quads and the other stuff is still going to go in. All you're going to do is give them a protected zone to be in and party and trash a place mm -hmm. with no way to get in there and enforce it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've noticed that last year sometime a new gate was put up um, where you go enter Berry Falls up over the Hubbardston line and you go in oh, yeah, Berry yeah, Falls. Yeah. There's a new gate there just before the Berry Town right. line. There's one of the old stone town line markers there so it's maybe a hundred feet before that. So that's just been put in mm -hmm. to block off Berry Falls as well. Yeah, I don't know if, I think that went at the same time that we talked about it here and we said no. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Hubbardston, it came in as a very nonchalant, they just want to let us know they're going to yeah. put a gate up. And we're like, no, you're not going to put a gate up. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Hubbardston perhaps just did not pay attention. And it's there, but it hasn't been locked. I've never seen it locked, but, right. you know, I could see if it was flooded or something in there, they would want to restrict access. Oh, yeah. but, and then you know. be locking Army Corps of Engineers yeah. out of their problems yeah. as well. Right. Good luck with that. Well, good, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. And um, uh, I, I mean, I'll be interested to uh, see who the DCR person is going to be. That's an appointed awesome. position then by the governor. So we, mm -hmm. I can't believe she would not be swayed. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to make sure these letters well, get to the okay, governor. This is a watershed as a portion of what DCR oversees is relatively small. Yeah. Well, then it shouldn't be a big deal. I agree. They also haven't drawn water off in over two years. It's, it's also the fact that they keep uh, going back to they want it to be an unfiltered water much. system, no. and the people on the top the say in charge of checking the water, water quality. Water river has to comply with the others in order to exactly. check the field. Yep. And they make it sound like it isn't untreated, but it's all treated. Oh, mm. so then very it's recently, the, the meeting so it had been almost two years. It just seems meeting. like, those, it seems strange to me that this is such a small issue that they're so into. I think it, on the, the local level, local commissioners, I think it's important to them. Oh. They're digging the heels in because oh. the people don't want their plan okay. instead of listening. There. Do you have any additional uh, blank copies of that petition? Yes. Yes. I'm to take one of those and make some copies. As far as the ownership of the um, cemetery goes for historic purposes, does this board need to just declare ownership, or do we need to have that done at a town meeting to uh, agree? It, it, it's a uh, deed of ownership, and it's, it's interesting in that Prince Walker, the former slave who buried his family mm -hmm. there, gave it to the town in 1855 but the deed was not recorded then and in 1943 some MDC employee was going through the records and found this deed that he felt should have been with the town of Barry so it was recorded in the 1940s so this land is deeded to the town of Barry but for consent from the owner does that have to come at a town meeting from the town at a, at a vote popular vote by the town or did the board of selectmen have that authority to Grant, per, grant permission for it to be a historic site. Oh, act. Do I mean when you need yes. permission from the landowner, does that come from the board or is that going to have to come from a town meeting? Um, that I don't know. Okay. I'll have to try to find out. Well, the sooner we have some language yes. out, the better. We will have a special town at some point. We can even put that in a special town and take a town vote uh, to. You know, across Just the Just say that you support it, support the application for a national right. register. As the owners of this land, the town of Barry hereby mm -hmm. supports no. um, that land Ever. being designated a historical site. Okay, very good. We could get that on the on the town meeting and have it voted on by the body of the town, and that covers any chance that we don't suffice in that. Mm -hmm. That's an actual cemetery. Location. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we just There's need a lot of other historic sites in yeah. the valley. But we don't well, own them. This is the one we own, so it's the right, easy right. one to. So that's the ownership yeah. one. Is right. some sort of definition as to how it's defined or yeah. mat and plop, um, whatever we have to define it, we can bring it to a meeting. And we can certainly put it up for town vote. I, I think that'll pass very quickly. Yes. Because mm -hmm. people are really upset about this. Yep. Great. Okay, thanks so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. <coughs> I guess we could um, go to, at this point, uh, our minutes. And so forth. I know that Project Purple is waiting for us, but we, we won't take very much to just get through our, our minutes. And uh, can we have some action on our minutes, please? Uh, January 17th, and then January 17th, executive session. Uh, I believe the executive session may be approved this evening, but not for release. I would move to approve the meeting minutes from January 17th. 
A second. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the meeting minutes of January 17th. Any questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, executive session minutes. Uh, that would, uh, be, again, these will not be for release. Those are in favor of approval of those meetings minutes? These ones can I would be move released. To well, I, well, I, Just I, because the MOU is done being negotiated. And okay, so because. It's at that meeting that we've released them on February. They, is it signed? It was, we, we haven't signed the uh, the MOU yet. The right? MOU will be signed during this meeting. During this meeting. Okay, yeah. well, why don't we by wait? By both parties? Well, it's already been signed by the union. Okay, so. Just making sure. So, yeah. yeah so, what, wait, why don't we wait until well, we've you signed can, we'll it? We'll approve it and, and, and hold them until the next yeah. meeting. Yeah, because you, you can yeah. approve it and say release pending the signing yeah. as well. Yeah. And then it's all covered. I'm going to stay either way because I wasn't yeah. part of that. Part. So, those in favor? I, nope. I would move to uh, approve, not for release. The executive session minutes from January 17th. Um, those in favor? Are those? I'll second that. And those in favor? Aye. And those Staying. abstaining? We have one abstention. Okay. So pending the uh, final signatures on this and approval by the board, will move forward with release of those. Okay. Um, select board reports. We will move on to correspondence item C under reports, and that would be. Uh, Purple Prevention Week. Oh, they're even dressed in purple. Mm -hmm. So this year we are doing something a little bit different for our eighth, ninth, ninth. ninth Purple for, for Prevention in the district. Uh, we have started our first uh, annual Purple for Prevention decorating contest. So we're asking businesses and community members to decorate their own spaces. We will continue to hopefully decorate our public spaces. So that's what we're really here to ask you for permission to decorate the public spaces in town while we will be asking businesses and homes to decorate their own spaces. So. We're asking for permission to decorate the common, the police department that they're doing, um, the public library. Uh, All of South Street. South Street. So as you're driving down the common, or down from the common to the high school, middle school, mm -hmm. that will let the other road gets <coughs> decorated for the road parents. Mm -hmm. So the buses and all of the. Very Plains and South Berry too. Okay. <coughs> um, and all the other towns. We have a motion. Uh, Sure, I make the motion to approve decorating the town properties listed. Uh, for Project Purple? Um, I'll second the motion. We have a motion made and seconded for permission, it seems kind of silly, to uh, decorate the commons and so forth for Project Purple. Uh, those uh, in favor? A quick discussion on it. Uh, just with the, the town commons, I assume there's specific parts of the town common, or we're, I assume we wouldn't be doing anything where the memorials are? Mm -hmm. Or does that part get decorated as well? Just around the edges, but, yeah, around the, edges but the monuments themselves are not decorated. Okay. We're, we're definitely careful to be very respectful. Yes. <coughs> and we do put, that, put up the ribbons um, February 26th. February 26th, we're going to be putting up that weekend, have them up for two weeks, and then take them down on that, that other weekend. So it's very clear. It comes up and it comes it's down within a two-week period of time. Any other questions, comments? If you want clarification on what Purple for Prevention is, um, it's where we are supporting our local youth and community members choosing to be substance free, as well as any community member, young or old, in the Quabbin District working hard to recover from substance use disorder. Mm -hmm. Certainly a worthy, worthy goal. When they're not, when no one's reaching very well, but I don't mean us, I just mean <laughs> across the nation. Yeah, the nation, right? Yeah. Uh, we have a vote to approve. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So it looks like unanimous. We're Great. sorry to hold you up. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Okay. Moving back to reports. Thank you. Uh, as select board reports, uh, <coughs> anyone have uh, anything to report? I got some stuff. Okay. Uh, again, with the master plan steering committee, we have put together our community vision ignite. Uh, that'll be March 1st at Stone Cow from 5 to 7.30. We'll be you know, interacting, helping people to understand what the master plan is and connect, collecting more information, um, especially geographic information about where the needs are in the town, the view of the public. So they've been- Stone Cow's hosting this for you? Yep, they, so they've offered the space. Awesome. So 
Very nice. Smart. Yep. Um, um, also, uh, started looking into uh, at the beginning of this weekend warming centers in town. Mm -hmm. um, if we could get some updates on the process of that, where you know um, whose responsibility it is to call for a warming center when it's time. I believe there was some discussion at one point about the senior center and the uh, generator there, either a potential generator or the previous generator, and some of the funding being contingent or being a part of that being a warming center. So I want to make sure we're we're doing that well. You know, is it you know police or fire who would call it? Obviously, we can't meet every time there's cold weather coming, but to make sure those resources are available and distributed. You know, I mean, you know, in the cities you think of them for being people who are homeless, but if there's power outages throughout the town and a freezing cold night, heating systems, I believe, are more likely to fail when it gets to that kind of temperature. So if we could put together uh, some information and determine how that should be operating going forward. Uh, and then the last thing, um, CMRPC, one of their representatives has offered to uh, talk with us or with uh, DPW Commission about how to initiate and get started potentially with a TIP project, a transportation improvement project. Uh, the last one the town of Barrie did was the town common, or the town center. So it's been a while since we've done one. Um, typically with a TIP project, we would pay for design, uh, for right of way, and then MassDOT would pay for construction. Mm -hmm. But MassDOT would be heavily involved in the design. So if it's it's a longer term plan, it, you know, um, usually takes like five or six years of design. So it's something that it can't be something that's necessarily urgent, but something that's going to need it. And so we can start looking into, you know, uh, getting something on the list before you know we yeah. just have a bunch of emergencies to take care of with the roads. Right. Sounds good. So, uh, we could either put something on agenda for one of these meetings or DPW Commission. And oh, we more we, I, about we that. can we can talk with um, Shannon who puts together the agenda and potentially have it for next week at the DPW meeting at least. A yeah, we'd have to see if they're discussion. available for next week. We might want a little more time to okay. plan something okay. to make sure they're Fine. available. We could bring it up at the meeting anyways. And yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. You're right. So they're not. Yeah. Just surprised. as far as the warming center situation. Uh, I would say that traditionally and probably well known by the police and Board of Health and everything that the primary shelter area in the community is the Quabbin Regional Middle High School. Uh, Robos Lane unfortunately does not have a generator uh, thus the capacity to keep heat you know and water available to people who might have to uh, be uh, you know placed somewhere. Um, the Middle High School has the capacity to pretty much house any number of folks and the generation capacity to run uh, a good portion of their building with heat, lights, and water. So I suspect that the police are well aware of that. Then, um, and, and it would be nice, I, I know that the folks who live in the um, housing down near Rogles Lane would love it to be Rogles Lane because they feel a comfort there that bringing them to the high school, I mean, they just can't wait to get out of there. Uh, it's very big, it's very, you know, um, kind of scary if that's not your, your place and you don't know a lot about it. And we say, yeah, there's great showers in the locker room. So anyway, we have the capacity to feed and to home, keep, keep people warm and so forth, and it is at the middle high school. And I know that there's been good cooperation between the school district and the community in the, in the past when we've had to use that facility. Uh, it is, you know, something to discuss. I know that the high school, or the, mid, uh, the school district has discussed the need for a generator at Rogos Lane because they do have freeze ups there on some occasion because of the way in the insulation. But whether or not that, it, it, it's a pretty expensive thing to put the generator of you know, yeah, capacity have, there. We already have 50 grand uh, um, appropriated for the generator, but we're, um, after I talked to Kevin about the project he anticipates it's going to cost more like a hundred grand wow. for a generator so um, well, that that's would be why we haven't moved and, and on yeah. the generator project yeah well I'm on, on top of just locations to understanding under what conditions that would be called and, yeah and where that responsibility lies to you know well I think it kind of lies with the police and I would the, say the emergency health. management director yeah. 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 who's the fire chief right um, um, and um, obviously, there's never been any reluctance on anybody's part to house people who need it. So um, I hope that that would continue in the community. But um, 
if you know, if, it probably would be a good thing for us to have a conversation with the person who's replacing the chief for a period of time mm -hmm. about that responsibility. And I and I'm assuming that responsibility is shared with the police department, who can also identify need. So, they typically do welfare checks. You should yeah. that call on, yeah. on citizens that yeah. they know are yeah. in need. I but know that Chief Rogowski was working on a updated emergency management plan for the mm -hmm. community. Um, I'm not sure. I, I want to say it's in, with FEMA for approval at this point, um, but that those are details that would be included in that type of plan. You know, I think Quabbin is a perfect location because it's a building that's been maintained mm -hmm. excellently over mm -hmm. the years. Um, and my concern with housing folks in our buildings is that oh, well, no, our buildings that either. are not superbly maintained and we are ourselves fighting heating issues on a daily basis um, and pipes bursting in our own buildings so that would just be my concern with having our our well facilities. these buildings that were being never said, we have yeah. a generator here and this building should have power and should be open uh, right. during such times right. but I mean period. maybe I, not I might mean, not have what heat, we don't what but we don't <laughs> have the capacity for if you're going to shelter people you need to be able to provide them with food. You can do that at the high school. You need to be able to provide them with a place to, for personal hygiene. The high school offers that. This doesn't offer that. Have, sitting in here for the afternoon, you know, maybe because you're cold, is okay. But if you have to spend any time there, you have to have access to food, water, you know, hygiene, uh, you know, toiletries, all that kind of stuff. And the only place that has that is the schools. Well, the um, important thing to me is that we have a plan in place and we communicate that plan to the public that yep. they know those resources yep. are available. And if the schools to be part of the plan, that needs yep. to be um, allowed by the superintendents, yep. the, not yep. in the control of the Preferably town. Preferably something to, to in writing at that point. Yeah. But well, I, I mean, I, I would just say that that has been the district policy for ad infinitum. They have never mm -hmm. not. And open I up. can't imagine they would, but no. I mean, it's officially we can't no. overstep and say, yeah. right. we're just going to use your school when we want. Well, technically, I know. technically the Board of Health can. The Board oh. of Health could say to the district, too bad, so sad, they'll take control. Not that I would suspect that's necessary. I do not ever in my, in my wildest dreams would I imagine the members of the Barry School Committee, who are five in number, who would ever not step up, ever, ever. So I, 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 don't sit, I don't lose sleep over that. I have lost sleep right recently about broken pipes in town buildings, though, <laughs> and I really was going, oh, on Friday and Saturday for the library because we've already had that huge problem. And they just have had, had an it ongoing problem for many. How many times have we cleaned up the library? Five from broken pipes? I mean, and, and just water running down the, yep. the driveway, many, too. Many, many times. Yeah. Well, anyway, so we, we made it. The library <laughs> made it through um, that very cold um, weekend, and so I'm very happy So did all that. of the town buildings. I know, and it was it's cold, great. and it was windy. Yes. I mean, we were closing dampers and running on un unoccupied, believe me. <laughs> so we were good. Uh, okay, I think that um, anything else for board reports? Nothing for you, Greg? Okay, um, I would just say just an update on cable. You're going to give an update on cable too, uh, just to let the public know because if there's anything I get stopped on the street about, it's when are you going to get act? When are we going to get cable? Um, and obviously there's some noise about the fact that you know I guess uh, Spring Hill Road now has cable at least strong. I don't know if people actually have it, but uh, so there is that conversation about how come them and not us and. So we do have an attorney working with um, Charter on that. I know you have a little update on that, but for the public that's still waiting for cable access, uh, know that the board has committed itself to um, making that happen. We do have the funding available through the ARPA funds that we are, we are pretty much not doing much with, waiting to make certain that we have sufficient reserves to take care of that problem for many people within the community who still have no access to, ca to cable. Um, that's the only thing that I would like to just make sure that the public is aware of. And on that note, <coughs> I will start my update uh, mentioning that I did meet with our attorney today to um, work on bringing cable and internet to our unconnected areas of town. Um, essentially today we met about uh, a little bit of a fact-finding mission, me sharing the data that I have on you know, what areas of town don't have cable or internet, 
approximately, you know, we, we looked at some maps and we talked about the amount of, of miles of um, cable lines that are going to have to be run, you know, how that all factors into charters uh, calculations when we talk about a price. Um, you know, charter has communicated to me that they will do $2,000 per passing, so for every person who signs up, we will get $2,000 um, back to the town for that as a kind of like a rebate. And so this week, uh, the attorney is drafting a letter to Charter's government relations team to formally request a draft broadband agreement, um, which would include a price proposal and all of, you know, the legal things that go along with creating a broadband agreement. Um, and we're also kind of in an interesting time where the uh, our cable license with them expires next year and what a lot of towns do is they try <coughs> and um, incorporate negotiating increased access into the next cable contract so I think we're at a, a really good time to be I mean it's not great that we've had to wait this long to get everybody connected but we are at a good time as far as negotiating goes um, to hopefully, you know, have a little bit better conversations regarding the price of this project. Um, so that's where we're at with the cable access, but hopefully we make a little bit more headway. The communications on the on charters end have been slow, 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 very slow. Um, the next thing that I want to touch on is the discussion on meeting recording that we had at the last meeting. So I spoke with Rick <coughs> Degon, who records and uploads the meetings for the Select Board and the Finance Committee um, regarding some questions about recording meetings and then uploading them to YouTube and kind of a process on what that would look like. So essentially, the YouTube account that all of the town's meetings are uploaded to are linked to his personal account um, so we wouldn't be able to get get anybody access to that to to upload any videos and um, transferring the channel to different ownership isn't really an option either because it's a lengthy and complicated process that um, he's not been able to successfully complete um, and I think for continuity purposes, we probably wouldn't want to create a whole different channel at this point. Um, so, you know, we could work out a system where we could request that he uploads videos, but going through the process <coughs> of creating play playlists, as we discussed last meeting for each board and committee, is also time consuming. Um, and that's not, you know, that additional workload just doesn't fit into his schedule at this point so essentially we would be looking at a similar format to what we have now for other any <coughs> other meetings that would get uploaded get the same ticket to to YouTube <coughs> um, we also talked a bit about some different hardware that exists <coughs> software that exists to help with the recording like um, <coughs> some different cameras and microphones and whatnot. So those are all part of our conversation. <coughs> and then the last thing Do that you have I a question about that? Um, no, I don't know if it's necessarily on the agenda to discuss this. It's finally. the same spot to it. It's, 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 it's a difficult thing. spot where the town has passed a bylaw telling us what we need to do. And <coughs> if, you know, he's, he's saying he's not interested in doing that, and that's completely understandable. Mm -hmm. Uh, completely understandable, but we do need to seriously consider how to comply with the bylaw that's been passed until, you know, unless it's rescinded at a town meeting, we need to either, you know, find a way to either, you know, find a way to get these meetings recorded in a, in a sufficient way and get them uploaded. Yeah, I think a lot of these questions um, could, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right, could have been maybe discussed before the bylaw was passed or brought up on or the before night. before we used a private channel to create our town's YouTube account. That's, yeah, yeah I mean, right. even regardless of this, it, 
it might be better to start over now or find a way to <coughs> either purchase it or transfer it in some way. I, it's, mm -hmm. It should not continue going on as a private account that our meetings are being uploaded to. Yeah. But that's, okay. uh, we're going to have to find some way to address that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, the this bylaw was brought up on the night of the public hearing before our town meeting, so it really was short-sighted and le a lot of lack of transparency in getting even the bylaw to the <coughs> town meeting floor. So I think a lot of these issues could have been addressed, you know, before we even brought the town brought it to town meeting floor. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was the marijuana establishment licensing question that was brought up at the last meeting. Um, I was asked to go to our attorney about our ability to issue a license to a marijuana establishment. Um, in, at the last meeting, I had encouraged the select board to issue the license as it is a separate requirement from the host community agreement and our attorney concurred that the license and the host community agreement are separate and should be treated as such. Um, and in the event that the licensee is in violation of the terms to hold the license, then the select board has the ability to suspend the license. So again, I would recommend that um, you know both marijuana establishment licenses are um, created and go for the duration of the entire calendar year. We already did one. <coughs> For IHOC. Mm -hmm. and, so the uh, other one would be. Uh, I, I've never said they're not separate licenses, but the the license is always um, the last piece. The host agreement's the first piece. And I I don't I, we didn't we weren't trying to ask if they were tied together with the with the attorney. It's 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 procedural. You know, you get a driver's license after you have a learner's permit, and and this host agreement is supposed to proceed. But they have an uh, active <coughs> host community agreement right now. Yeah. Until when? I don't know the expiration date of it, but. Three years from the date it was written. Okay. So, again, I don't know when it was written. It was I wasn't here for when it was written. But today, and as of, so January 1st was when these licenses were supposed to go into effect. And as of January 1st, and as of today, they have an active host community agreement so again I would recommend you have a copy of that with you <coughs> for us the host community agreement yeah I might have it digitally I think that there's some complication with this particular situation due to the fact that we had a meeting when we thought we were talking about impact costs mm -hmm. and we ended up taking a vote to extend I think contra the license and the and they believe the host agreement didn't we no I wasn't at that meeting so I want to say <coughs> but he but we, we, we just agreed on a number to put into a new agreement and then we were notified by um, it didn't really count the company after the fact that they couldn't stay with that number because their production would be so low that that number yeah. would exceed three percent of their exactly. sales and therefore it was never put together for an agreement the agreement was never brought forward back to the board so we never reached or voted on um, their changes further their, agreement. their changes right well I think that the whole thing needs to be clarified uh, before we worry about what it says tonight. I don't even recall renewing that agreement even once. So I would think we're in the last year of it being functional. The host agreement? Mm hmm Well, we need to find that out before obviously spending a lot of time talking about it. I would say. I think John had a good idea before that we would uh, extend the license for 60 days after the state releases its new guidelines for host agreements. That gives us two months to continue the license for an entire year. I'd rather do that than issue a year license and have the chance revoking it if something's not made. Well, I, w I would rather not uh, take action on this tonight since it hasn't been on the agenda as an item and that we put this on the uh, next agenda 
uh, for, to take action so that in the, any individual who would be impacted by this can uh, reach out and uh, have a say as long as it's on the agenda. So if you can have our attorney um, available to us potentially, yep. uh, if there's a question or something virtually. Oh yeah, hopefully. no, he was definitely okay. willing and able that would be to helpful. talk to the board. Okay, so um, that will be an agenda item for the next meeting and yep. with our attorney's presence and so forth and probably any individual who's impacted by this should be made aware that we will be having that discussion. Sure. Okay. Uh, anything else? Nope, that's all. Okay. Um, we do have that comment by Mr. Diagon. Of, of, um, yes. So about an increase in his uh, compensation, I think. It's under our correspondence. Correct. Yeah. So um, the last time that Rick, who <coughs> records our meetings in the finance committee meetings as well, um, requested an increase was in 2019, and I believe that rate is $50 an hour. Um, when you think about how it's not necessarily a lot of time every week, but it is, you know, time out of his evening to, you know, spending from his family and, and everything. Um, other communities, he's also, you know, raised the rates that he works with. So he is just uh, requesting a rate increase. Again, this doesn't come out of any of our budgets. Um, it is fully funded by our PEG access funds, which we have quite a bit amount. How many hours a week does he generally work? I would have to look at his I just wondered what you want to you know what the what the compensation is over the term of of a fiscal year. Wait, it might be like it I want to say from meeting to meeting. How many hours? Right, it kind of depends on how many hours he that we spend in a meeting. But I would say maybe the breakdown on his invoice on an average oh. meeting where where we're not here until nine o'clock at night, um, maybe like five hours per meeting. I would say but that's fair. Time, yeah. yeah. So five hours a week that we have a meeting. Yeah. Every week that we <coughs> have a meeting, correct. Does so he, maybe like 10 hours Does he do budget and finance week. too? Correct. Yeah, so during the, so during the budget. So that's busy. Yeah. During the budget season, he gets a little bit busier with us, and I'm assuming the other communities that he works with. Okay. Um, what well, sort of contract we have with Mr. Deegan? Because it seems to me that we're approaching a dollar amount that we pay him that exceeds what we can do without having some sort of yeah. agreement, a contract with him. This is. What's that dollar? We've that never dollar? approved just letting someone just bill us openly. And usually, I mean, if you do, you do the dollar amount like this, but do we need, we don't need bids to this, I assume, but do we need to accept it? Well, do we have a contract? We accept it for a term? I, I mean, usually you accept something like this for a fixed term. Well, that was before we were both here, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. You've been here the longest. Do you remember anything? I would, no, I would, I remember we rose the rates, but I would, like, I, I know if I do work for the town of Groton, I give them a, a rate that I'll work for, and they accept that rate for last for three years, then I have to give them a new rate, and they have to go to vote on it again. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a term that I can... Well, obviously, that that's maybe another for. quick question for an attorney. Make sure we're doing yeah. it right, and yeah. make sure... Um, um, because obviously, we're, we're going, you know, to a considerable percentage raise mm -hmm. uh, here. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm saying he doesn't deserve it, but I mean, we're talking about, you know... A yeah, I want to say he's been doing this for probably about ten years. But. Ten years, okay. No. But we should we should have yeah, that, something in writing about this. That type of rate gets to a professional licensed person's rate, not a, a layman's rate. Yeah. So and it's, it's a, so he must it's he a must stiff rate if he just doesn't have some sort of licensing for this, and maybe he does. I don't yeah. know. Now, do we we provide him with a ten ninety nine every year? I would suspect. Yes, he's not our employee, Correct. so it's sort of a contracted service. Correct. Okay, so. Um, so maybe there is a, a, some sort of a contract around. Maybe there isn't. I will do some research. But if you don't remember it, probably not. I don't remember a contract. I remember the last time he, he rose you know, the rates, but like I said, it wasn't that long yeah. ago. Um, that's a big jump. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 50% increase. I know. I see the same thing. My, my business insurance jumped 50%. My car insurance jumped 50%. There's no rationale for those companies to say they've had costs they have inflicted them to make a 50% increase yet, here we go. Well, I would say that um, his is more the typical going rate at 75. I don't know. I, I would say. Well, and you know, know, in the areas that I work, I mean, that would certainly be. Licensed areas, typically, I think. I just, mm -hmm. I just don't see. I don't know. 
Mm. Okay, that's, so we'll that's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar year compensation salary rate, and I think IT people cost you less than that to get someone in full time. I well, I'll, yeah, we're asking. Well, that, I mean, this is you know considering a person overhead. It's not just you know yeah. once a move. But it's not yeah. just it's our it's town. It's and it's all his equipment. Multiple communities. It's all his equipment. It's all his yeah. time, which I think I agree with John. That's a little nervous that he said using his personal account. Yeah. And I know why. It probably started out a really small thing and it was easy right. to do. And well, that and, and honestly, <coughs> the way YouTube and other things have developed and changed over time, it could have been a separate one and then at some point it was, you know, yeah. all these accounts need to be linked to a, a personal one type yeah. of thing. Like yeah. Just be. the way things have developed over the past decade, that's, you know. So we just need to look now. into it and, and you know, not that we're, that the board has voted in opposition yeah. to the race, but just that we need to make sure that there's a contracted service agreement um, you know, that protects him and protects the community. Yep. And this links back to the discussion that we had at the last meeting about considering um, some sort of IT professional for us for this type of work uh, that we employ, be it part-time or full-time, um, that just does this for us. Then, you know, we control the salary, we control the amount, we control the hours. And yeah. then we can generate our own YouTube site and or link it to our web page, to our YouTube or whatnot, have someone that can do that for us. Um, that it's going to be strictly our attention, not us and whoever else, and not after their right. job in the evening. Well, that would, that would be very unlikely that we, we have this <coughs> tiny little need in account that the person who's going to fulfill that need is not going to be having other business, or they'd be starving. Well, it depends if we hire someone for yeah. a full-time yeah. There's I, also versus. other things within the town right. that need Attention. Attention. I, I wouldn't would be strictly yeah. that. If I would. I would just. Uh, maybe we need sort of an yeah. IT full-time personnel that, that can do this as well as. Yeah. Some I would sort just of recommend that um, both both of you, have, if you have the time, to read the um, Central Mass Regional Planning uh, Compact Agreement or or survey or work that they did between the Quabbin Regional School District and the town yeah. of Barry, and sharing services within. Um, the, that jurisdiction and, and why and how we should do that. And I think that was an award that Central Mass Regional Planning got for, for putting together strategies to have um, the, the, that cooperation because it would make sense for the district that's located here and make sense for the town. Uh, it's worth reading because there may be some ways in which we could capitalize on some of the talent pool that's already employed and uh, it's because we're not, we're not, we're not going to yeah, get certainly enter an agreement with another town yeah. that has a similar oh, issue. Exactly. To find someone who's exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, I, there's we, certainly nothing wrong with. We've done those agreements with, yeah. with our police yeah. and, oh, and, and the but, ambulance and, as well. The ambulance yeah. and the building inspector yeah. department. But I mean, it, it, you know that uh, that opportunity yeah, to cooperate with another community and so mm -hmm. forth because we can't be one man shows. It just makes no sense. No, but we certainly could possibly generate an IT description position that we could invite other towns to join in on, just like Good the building point. inspector, Good point. and share the expense to some portion to these towns, yep. and they allocate their, their hours accordingly. Yep. Right, and we can, you know, compare the cost of that, and also a more versatile position just for Barry that does several other things that are, you know, yep. that I, regularly get held up for other I would bet that this so gentleman we that we hire options. already works for other towns. Um, I believe he works for three other towns, and then he also has a full-time IT-related job. job. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so if we wanted to have a person of our own sort of thing with, you know, shared between three or four other towns that we are, you know, like we do the Rutland Dispatch, we're part of a group that pays the freight for that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think these are good ideas and things that we should look into. What is a current contract with the gentleman? Not that he doesn't merit a, a raise. That, that's not our, dis, you know, con. You know, well, it doesn't sound like it's an option. It sounds like he's going to bill us more. That's yeah, yeah. Really, us. I think the issue that he's comes down know. to is that <laughs> but we our have to town approve is, these rates, I think. Yeah. Our, our town has a higher demand for video resources because of the bylaw. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying anything against the bylaw, but right. you know, as long as that stands, it's our obligation to meet that to try to meet requirement. It. Yeah. And right. you know, it's a higher demand than he said he's you know interested in right now and I'm grateful that he's still Absolutely. doing the ones that he's doing in the meantime mm -hmm. yeah but we need to find some method to well, make those work that's my point I think it sounds yeah. like he doesn't have that time if he works full-time right. presume 40 hours a week if he's working five to ten hours for us a week I would want to add more to that either. and then you have two or three other towns he could yeah. be working 80 hours a week as yeah. isn't in right. I can see why he just 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 check it, see if we have a contract with him if we ever did yeah um, if if they if it's recommended by council that we should do that then obviously we should 
uh, look into creating a document that would be appropriate so that we can vote on this matter yep. going forward. And I think it would be wise to, for us to reach out to our surrounding towns, at least say within our school district, yep. Yep. and see if they have any interest in... in Partnering. In, yeah, this, this type of regional position. Yep. And also talk to the school and, and see who they're using, and maybe they want to partner in that same regional position. I mean, maybe... You know, maybe they have somebody yep. un underutilized that they might like a little more of, and and we can bundle the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. so, um, okay. I think but we just need to be realistic about how much of a demand <coughs> we would be putting on that person if we were getting every meeting posted. Yep. Not, not necessarily recorded, but posted. Yeah. And we just need to make sure we're cognizant of that and, yep. and you know, looking at these options. Right. We also can't overshare and, and no. put someone in a position where they can't, can't fulfill it as well. Right. Exactly. Uh, but right. we need to, you know, feel our interest. Um, maybe we direct Jessica to, to call some of these other towns and um, see yeah. what kind of interest. we got, we got to start by, you know, you know, gauging the interest if other people are interested. Um, other towns, yeah. And, right. Or and and, and the school as well. Yeah. And, um, and bring that back to us yeah. maybe for a couple meetings from now. I don't think it's something you need to do instantly, but give her a couple. Well, it's, it's obviously need to be on the agenda. Right. <laughs> and we need to get some background information to uh, <coughs> move forward. I do really encourage the uh, reading of that document, though, that Central Mass Regional Planning did about sharing services, the town sharing services. So okay. a lot of that legwork was done a couple, maybe four or five years ago now. Um, moving on to uh, probably one of the m more important things that we're talking about tonight is early voting option. And um, I know that you have some, you've had an opportunity to at least look at this in our packet, and um, it looks like uh, the recommendation is that we opt out of early voting by mail due to funding, staffing, overall lack of public interest in local elections and time restraints on the clerk's office. Absentee voting by mail will still be available as always. Uh, then a, a vote by mail requirements are, are you know, there, but in-person early voting is, is not required. It is an option. Um, so we may vote to opt out of in-person early voting at least five days before the start of the early voting period, which would be March 12th after receiving a recommendation from at least 50% of the Board of Registrars. If opting into in-person early voting, the period may start no sooner than 17 days before, et cetera, et cetera. So talk to me about the Board of Registrars. So the Board of Registrars is a um, group of residents who they meet regarding elections. Okay. Uh, they do everything. Who appoints those? That's a good question. I don't remember appointing, but no. I'm not saying. I want to say the town clerk appoints them. Okay. As the town clerk, as an elected official, has the ability to um, okay. appoint the board of registrars. Is that I'm, who this letter is from? This, this is letter is from the town clerk. Town clerk. Okay. What, yeah, what we're reading right now is a letter from the um, town clerk saying that she's recommending the okay. board. Oh, I just realized she didn't sign this letter. But, um, but when it says the board of registrars, so it, it does our vote precede? the action that the Board of Registrars may take? So the Board of Registrars has already voted they have. to okay. not opt into early per in person early <coughs> voting. So um, because you don't have a recommendation from at least 50% of the board, uh, the select board doesn't have the option to opt into early oh. voting okay, so in person. So, okay. so, so that part is Easy. Kind of a moot, moot point, right? Just mm -hmm. informational. There will be no in person early voting for our local elections um, as it is not required. And the but the um, vote tonight, which will have to be done by roll call, is for the m vote by mail requirements. Um, so, on the flip side from the in person early voting vote by mail has to be um, opted out of by okay. the select board. And um, essentially, we still have the typical absentee voting by mail, which um, has always been available. Early voting is different mm -hmm. um, because it requires the town clerk to mail out to every eligible voter a ballot, and then the voters have to opt into um, you know, accepting that 
option do, essentially do you, to vote. Do you by know now. how many people in the last local election opted into early voting by mail? I would say there was a, there was a lot of people. I well, maybe like forty percent of the people who voted voted by mail. It was a or or in person wow. early voting. It was a lot. But it was also for a much bigger election. No, no, no. I'm no, talking no, about no. local. Local elections. Oh, the last, the last local. local. I okay, wouldn't. Sorry. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm going election. to say it's 40 percent of the. I couldn't no, believe no, no. that, John. You're really good, but I don't believe that. <laughs> the last local election, this was not an option at all. Right. So okay. um, absentee voting was probably at a super minimum, as it usually is for um, local elections. I want to say the local turnout for our our um, is dismal. I, is I like think it'd be interesting to know the last time where this was offered for a local election because I believe it was prior to that one um, during COVID in the years prior. But I don't, if that's something we could look into, I mean, I um, I just want to be conscious of the dates so that she can yeah. be prepared. Well, I I noticed the second page is actually to hold a public hearing about this, so I assumed that we were. If anything, voting to have a public hearing, not voting on whether or not to. No, you have to vote on this tonight. Okay, so this says the notice is hereby given that the Barry Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to consider opting out of vote by mail for the April 3rd, 23, okay, town elections. Said hearing will occur on, is that this tonight? Tonight. Is that what this is? Yes. Oh. So this is okay. our... We're holding a, we're holding a public hearing now. I this was published as a public hearing. Yes, it was posted. Okay then. As all of our meetings are. As a public hearing, specifically. Well, public hearing is a little different. Isn't I it? I mean, we should at least uh, convene a public hearing <laughs> on this matter then. So did, did it tell us? Did it tell us what time we were going to do this meeting here? Well, it was posted for six thirty. So for six, well, okay. We at 8 okay. Where's? I'm sorry. We need to opt out at least forty-five days before the election. Yeah. Which is the seventeenth. Yeah. How much notice is required for a public hearing? Uh, one week. What's that? Mm -hmm. One week. The, the only thing I worry about is that um, technically such a, such a posting should be signed by us, right? No. I mean, it says here Barry Select Board. That's the that's what gets submitted to Ellen, saying that you voted to opt out of the early election. Early that's not what this says at all. No, it says that we, we voted for to have the hearing. Right. That's what this is, that we voted to have a hearing tonight. See, that we would hold a public hearing. So that was posted and mm -hmm. it must have been posted without signature then. I mean, I've never posted a hearing like that. I mean, the select board's never signed a hearing before. That's no, we don't have to sign a notice of a hearing now. Right. Yeah, but the way that this is well, the way that it's, it's presented. Written, yeah, yeah so. it does look yeah. like. Well, unless, it, unless it's required for that type of. For the, I mean, this the, is the all last, new to everybody. The last thing we voted on like this was the notice for all of the um, in-person early votings and things that we approved for the last mm. election. Right. Right. Um, and we did vote to approve them all. I don't recall signing it. We may have. Well, all I know is it says I'm, that she's recommending an opt out of early voting. That's by mail. That's the only thing that's really a change. Yes. In person voting will happen as it has in the past. T typical other uh, of the way in which the business of the town is, you know, in, in uh, elections, that will be carried out as always just the opting out of early voting by mail without right. reason. I, I well, there is a big reason why we should not do early voting by mail, and it's because the, um, the amount of stress on our resources can't be 
expressed enough. I mean, it's really expensive because you have to mail out to every single eligible voter at 64 cents per piece of mail. Um, that early voting is an option. And then you also have to staff um, people to people to send out the mail to receive incoming mail that you know by people the small portion of people who would say that they would want to vote by mail. Honestly, um, even if we were to opt out of this, I do think it's a good idea to still send something to everyone to inform them of the upcoming election. I mean, and that might be a simpler option where we don't need to receive anything, but I don't know that we should, you know, remove this option without still sending something out to, to improve turnout and make sure everyone knows that there's an election coming. I mean, that, you know, might be splitting the difference a little bit, but yeah. I, I'd be hesitant to get rid of it just for the sake of it notifying people that there's an upcoming election. Yeah, it doesn't say uh, in our I'm, listing I'm also, that it's a hearing. It just says early, in, yeah. early voting. And I'm, I'm also hesitant to approve it without... It's not listed as a public hearing. The pub, yeah, without some public input. I, I wasn't aware it was a public hearing. I don't think anyone else was in town, and that, that concerns me. But, if, if we okay. can move forward with this sure. without it. Like we have a meeting next input. week at DPW. We can have a selectman meeting there prior to that at 6 o'clock, uh, 6.30. Will that, will, will that meet the um, uh, deadline? Or we can have it here at 6.30 and then we need, go we down to that. It should notice. be one week. Um, so. so Monday would be too early. Well, we don't have two weeks. Nope. So we could make a special meeting on Tuesday. Or Wednesday, whatever. I mean, I'd rather Tuesday get it done ASAP and have an official yeah. public hearing. Tuesday at six would be great because I have finance at six thirty. Okay. Let's let's plan to do that and and put the, this um, thing for because if this is supposed to be we'll a public be here hearing, and then finance will meet at six thirty here as yeah. well. Yeah, and we'll and we'll open a public meeting, yep. public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for this purpose and. Like I'd, I'd feel much better about that. Yes, yep. sure. it's, it's clearly a reads yeah. public hearing. Now we will it, uh, sign I mean, this. Yeah. 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 To get more public sign it. I'm sure she didn't write this whole thing up just for fun. I'm sure no, I'm sure she so. didn't. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, yeah. So I, I appreciate the uh, flexibility of everyone to be here on Tuesday. In fact, I'd PM. feel better if we fill this out and sign it before we leave. As long as you're clean, I'm happy to do that. It definitely seems like the intent of this is to and in, in that case you probably don't want me to fill it out though well the problem is <laughs> uh, it's gonna it's uh, with da, 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 da. better penmanship than i yeah. so say february 14 2023 at 6 p.m okay so okay if melbourne in the town election this sitting here will turn at february 17 14 14. 14. 14. Fourteenth at six p.m. at the Henry Woods Building. Blah 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 blah. And then the hearing will start at six p.m. and the completion of conducted. Da da da. I will sign that. And Greg and Should John. We have an official call. motion for this. I, I move we have a hearing next Tuesday at six p.m. for a public hearing for this. Second. Okay. We have a motion. I roll call. Yeah, we have a motion made and seconded to conduct a hearing as required or suggested by the town clerk regarding um, early mail-in voting. Um, those in favor? Dixon, yes. O'Sullivan, yes. Marshall, yes. Who wants it? Jessica or Sandy? You, you want to just um, Sandy, Sandy, Sandy? Sandy, okay. All right. All right. Okay, moving through and uh, getting to personnel wage authorization for Jason Messenger, Fire Department, to twenty dollars and sixty-three cents. That has been signed, I believe, by the chief. And um, so, so I on. move to approve the wage authorization for Jason Messenger. And, uh, I would second that motion. 1945. To 1945? 
2063. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at yeah. 2063. Okay. Is okay. Thank you. Um, uh, I would second that motion to change that to $20.63 per hour. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. And we have an abstention. We have the fire department union MOU that we have reviewed and our attorney has reviewed. Uh, we have had approval by the union uh, and for the individual personnel who will be uh, working in the stead of our fire chief who has been deployed and I think f for many months. And so I think that, uh, if, do you have any questions on that? I know that we've already spent a good deal of time on it as yeah. has our attorney. Just a clarification that this does go into effect February 20th as well. Yep. February 20th? Uh, February 20th is the official date that it will go into effect. We're working overtime already. <laughs> okay, Aren't so. you glad you're not in the same unit anymore? Move to approve the, uh, <laughs> The MOU? As, pre as presented as and presented. approved by our council. Yes. Um, here, I would second that motion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Same. Abstaining. We have an abstention. Uh, that document needs to be signed by me. Is there an original copy somewhere or can I just sign this? You can just sign And our thanks to those individuals who are going to be picking up additional duties and responsibilities. We thank you for that. You don't look excited. <laughs> you look tired. Yeah. All day. Okay, we're good with that. Um, okay, South Barry Infrastructure Plan Agreement. Yes. So, John and I have been involved with um, our partners at CMRPC who are managing our community development um, block grant. Mm -hmm. Part of the CDBG funds that we have is to do an infrastructure planning, um, an infrastructure plan, I should say. So uh, even though it's not required of us, we went through the competitive bid process um, to, to show that there was effort in comparing our options uh, for this type of work. Uh, so essentially, I've spoken on this a little bit in the past, but um, the scope of the project is to evaluate the infrastructure that we have in the South Barry area and um, create a plan to address um, you know, any issues that we have with the infrastructure in that area of town. Um, so after going through the competitive process, we all decided on uh, Wesson and Sampson as being the most qualified and they fall within our price range of uh, $115,000 to do this plan. Again, this is already covered under the CDBG grant. Um, and so this, this contract is for the select board to uh, review and sign. I, I believe Maureen is actually the only one that needs to sign it, but. Um, uh, just, just to clarify, it, it was a competitive qualification process not necessarily a uh, competitive bid process, which is, it's, it's been essentially the mm -hmm. same. Um, it's just reviewing which one has the best qualifications with our own cap set on what they can charge. So this may work we very well. reviewed four different uh, firms that submitted for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do believe that Wesson and Sampson had the best uh, proposal mm -hmm. set of qualifications for this work. Yes. It was, it was uh, there are a couple of really good Candidates, though. Great. This should go very well with that um, DOR, the roads plan that we're going to yes. look into with DPW. The, the I'm tip sure South Barry could use some work. Certainly. And this could uh, also potentially establish other funding for roadways and uh, also sewer, water, drainage, any. All of which we're in need of. <laughs> uh, which we're in process on. Right? Yeah. Yep. Right, so um, specifically the person that we're working with at CMRPC, he has a good track record of working through these projects and then seeing projects implemented afterwards, which is always a, um, you know, an important. The challenging step. Yeah, the challenge, the most challenging step is getting from the plan to, you actual know, the actual. Actual funding in the ground. Yes, yes. So. And, and, I, and I know that one thing that pub the public often gets frustrated with is the idea that, um, they think that, you know, well, they got this grant and they got this money, and so tomorrow people are going to start moving earth. <laughs> and I mean, I, it's important that we make it 
obvious that this is not going to be tomorrow morning, but what is the timeline on this, do you think, John? So I believe in their scope, the timeline, uh, actually I believe it was one of our uh, requirements for their scope. Uh, for the prod for the assessment portion here to be done within, I believe it was 12 months? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, after that, it de it's going to heavily depend on what funding we can get, yeah. if, you know, and how, how it moves forward from there. Yeah, so what this funding's available and what we can use from this report to get funding for it. Right. Probably a safe bet to say about two years before you get anything done. Once you find funding in the end line of the contract as you get moving on it. Uh, Potentially. It depends a lot on how much design work would need to be done. Yeah. Um, Good what review warrior. processes the state would require for some of the funding. I, I, I know that these, it's a, this is South Barry infrastructure and there is um, a fire station there. Yes. Is that anything that could be considered as part of an infrastructure upgrade as part of this? I only say I, that because... I don't know. Um, one of the tricky parts with the CBDG grant is it has to specifically assist the uh, census block that it's directed towards. Um, so one of the examples they gave is if there's a park in that area, if there's no parking available and it's just for the use in that area, that's something that might you know, receive funding, but it's, again, it's harder to get funding for parks than for, you know, water, for example. All right. Um, but if there's a lot of parking and, pe and it's really used more by people coming from other areas, then it's not going to as easily receive that type of funding. So that fire station, you know, where it's for Auxiliary. the use of the entire town, not necessarily that census district specifically, okay. it might be more difficult to get funding. But for if there was the a playground station. for children that could be uh, that for that area of town, that might get a better. A it, bet it depends on how it's used. Okay. It's really what it comes down to. And okay. this report should, you know, establish those use patterns as well as what physically is there. It also, um, in part, establishes you know who is there and what patterns are okay. being used. Okay, so um, is that something that we have to approve, I believe? Yep. And so, John. And you have to sign it. Yeah, John, do you want to make a recommendation since you were the one representing our board on this matter? I would recommend to approve this agreement. Between Western and Sampson Engineers and the Town of Barry? Okay. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the ag agreement presented to the board this evening between the Town of Barry, Massachusetts, and Western and Sampson Engineering, Inc. Um, those in favor? Aye. 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 It looks like it's a unanimous vote. I will sign the document and... Um, Sandy has the copy. Sandy, that. you have the copy that you want me to sign? You can just oh. give it to me before the end of the okay. meeting. So right. Okay. Okay. Um, the 250th uh, committee, I guess, is uh, submitting to us a document um, that uh, they're seeking 250 for us to provide a deposit in the amount of $250 to engage the um, what they call the Philadelphia Mummers, an agreement that they would be at our um, 250th uh, uh, celebration, I think, in the parade, and in order for us to, uh, you know commit them to that date, uh, we need to pay the amount of $250. Uh, all, all such, do all such, they have mo enough money to <coughs> pay the $250 because they've raised by, you know, fundraising and so forth, you know, maybe about 25000 However, they cannot authorize a contract. Only we can authorize a contract on their behalf. So the client agrees to pay the, okay, the deposit. There's no question that once we, okay, approve this, technically we're the client, we're going to pay the 250. Um, Town of Barry's a client, yes. Yeah. yeah, so just just to clarify that, so that 250 we can ask the um, 250th committee to reimburse the town if we would like, or we, I know that they're hoping to come to a special town meeting that we hope to have in sometime in March, where they're going to present a sort of a budget to the town, to the community, and ask for an approval of a certain amount of funds for supporting the um, uh, festivities that they are imagining for the 250th celebration. So, what is your pleasure, gentlemen? I make a motion that we authorize the 250th committee to engage in this contract with the um, Aqua String Band. Mm -hmm for the purpose of our 250th celebration and that they'd be authorized to expend those funds needed for it. That they would expend those funds from their fundraising? Yes, and we'll get to town meeting, do it all. And we'll get to town, town meeting. meeting. Right. 
Okay, John? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to support the request of the um, 250th uh, committee to come into contract with the Aqua String Band, which is, some, I guess, collect, colloquially known as the Philadelphia Mummers, and um, that we would provide that, s okay, by con signing the contract as required. So I guess I'm the client. Well, my, my, um, my motion was that we authorize them to engage a contract. Well, I, I don't believe they can engage a contract for something from the town of Barry. We need to, to, to authorize the contract, not them. Okay, so let me revise my motion. Okay, well, let's, let's remove but the just, motion from the floor. Okay, I will we'll draw my motion. I will submit it. Okay. I move that the select board engage this contract as requested by the 250th committee to uh, retain the services for the harmonic group and that they be authorized to spend the funds from their account for it. Okay. That makes sense. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Changed slightly from the original. And um, those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then when it comes to that, let them do the checks that we authorize and keep it out of that pool and we'll, we'll add money to that pool. And so right. Got it. That money's already been designated for that. We'll give the town the option to contribute, which I'm sure they will, but I'd rather keep, it, keep it clean. Let yeah. the town authorize that and make sure that the coffers for them are, are substantial enough to do what they need to do. And we'll continue to authorize the payments through the board. Okay, there you go, Jessica. Thank you. Uh, okay, it looks like what we have is uh, some quickies ahead of us here. Um, the common vitular licenses, there are three presented to us. Northeast Pizza, Switches Nutrition, and Mullins Herbal Tea House. Do I have a motion? I uh, make a motion to approve the common vehicular Common Vic, Vic, Vic 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 license. Common V's. Yeah, Common V's. Yeah. Common Vic license for Northeast Pizza, which is Nutrition, and Mullins Herbal Tea House. Second the motion. We have a motion made and seconded about the Common Vitulars licenses uh, presented this evening. And those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. We have um, also uh, presented to us an opportunity to extend the entertainment license, license for Northeast Pizza. Those in favor? I should say I that make a motion we have to a motion. approve the entertainment and amusement license for Northeast Pizza. Second. We have a motion made and seconded for the entertainment license for Northeast Pizza. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Second unanimous. Old business. Did you have some other things to talk yes. with us about? Um, okay, go ahead. With the master plan steering committee, uh, there is interest in, uh, I believe there are what, six spots still that are open to members of other boards. Those boards you know, either haven't shown interest or said that there's no one interested. Um, so we'd like to move two of those positions to general uh, public okay. positions. Leave the other four available for any of those boards that do want to add. And you already board. represent us, right? I so do. I having another board. one of us wouldn't be useful. It complicates it because then you have to post every oh, meeting. Oh, yeah, so we don't want to do that. Okay. So I, just, I just know if there's no one else who nice wants to. Nice of you to argue. No, if there's no one else who steps up, I just don't want it, the it, committee it to. It complicates that. Yeah, it does. I make a motion that we um, open up two of those yeah. positions as requested to uh, general public. I second that. Um, is this something I should abstain from, Jessica? No. No. Okay. All right. Marine yeah. seconded. We have a motion made and seconded to open positions to the uh, general population for the master plan steering committee membership. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then and if we could just get that advertised out. Yeah. The and just what well, we just went by a couple of Vic licenses. I noticed on Facebook people posting that they're going to be opening something up at the old High Tides oh, okay. coffee shop. So I don't know, Jessica, if you've heard anything about it yet, but we want to make a reach out to them, just make sure they. Uh, yeah, no, they've already been in our office. Okay, okay. great. That's just actually, making sure, because a lot of people miss it, and you, you don't want to let them slog because everyone else does it. So. Well, that, that, that's great. One of the um, one thing that's come up on the, uh, the youth survey that we put out with the Master Plan Steering Committee is a desire for other types of coffee shops. So that's, that's great that that's going Yeah, that's, it's, it was a great place, and yep. I was surprised. I, I think their issue was they lost their ability, their fry cook or something, so they I, just couldn't I keep their because they seem to do very well there. I don't know. Uh, well, certainly, hope, hopeful. I'm always yep. hopeful when they... Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're going to um, need to go into executive session, mm -hmm. and um, we are, I would... Um, ask for a motion to go into executive session under Mass General Law Section 30A, 
21A to discuss strategy in respect of collective bargaining or litigation um, if an if because an open meeting would be detrimental to the effect on bargaining or litigation. And that would be to discuss issues with the police union and then subsequent to that to conduct strategy. Do we need them, the second one? Yes. Oh, we do, okay. Uh, master in law section A 21A to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations of non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations for non-union personnel acting fire chief. Um, Make a motion we move to uh, executive session under Mass General Law Chapter 30A Section 21A to discuss strategy for both the police and fire unions. We will come out of executive session only to adjourn. And we expect to be in uh, executive session how long? 30 minutes, I would think. Okay, we will be in executive session for 30 minutes, coming out only to adjourn. Those in favor of moving to executive session? Dixon, yes. O'Sullivan, yes.